Aisha Bywathers, casting director for We Are Lady Parts. Uh, first of all, congratulations on your BAFTA win a couple of weeks ago for the show. Uh, uh, amazing speech. Everyone go watch the speech online. But um, I love what you said in it because uh, you said sometimes you're you're one of one on the job. And this time I was one of many and it meant so much. And could you just expand on what you meant by that uh, working on the show? Yeah, I mean, um, it was such a special experience working on this show. It was um, a chance to work with lots of people, lots of women who um, also came from similar backgrounds to me, um, a people of, of colour who've had similar sort of um, experiences growing up in the UK. So it, it just felt like a really nice experience. You know, you don't have to explain all the time everything you're doing and why you're doing it and why it sort of feels important or authentic and why you want to make work that people can watch and feel seen. Mm -hmm. I think the show does that itself. Um, it, it follows the, the Muslim, Muslim woman in a punk band and a lot of the stuff goes on set and I feel like maybe on another show, maybe told through like a white lens, they'll feel the pressure to explain um, certain things like, you know, how, how they practice like each um, religion uh, or their religion. Uh, so, I, and I know you've worked with Anita Manzur before, the creator. So what, got, what did you guys like discuss when you were first starting to cast the show? I mean, in, in terms of, we just discussed the girls and what they were like. I suppose it's exactly that. It, it's not really delved into in the scripts. So we didn't need to, as long as we felt that those girls were authentic, then that, that was how we'd move forward. Um, you know, there's different challenges. So one of the cast wears a niqab the whole time. So you only see her eyes, the character Montaz, played by Lu Lucy Shorthouse. So that's an interesting audition process in itself because obviously you, you didn't start the process like that. And actually most of the process, she wasn't wearing a niqab, but you just knew that she could, until you know those final recalls, but you just knew that she could emote in a way that would really work. But that's something that I've not seen before. I would speak about how wonderful it was to see, you know, the idea of someone wearing that and then sort of like, smoking an e-cigarette you know, like, <laughs> through it and what that will look like. It, it, it's just things that you haven't seen, which obviously will happen. <laughs> yeah, for sure. and again, it's something else that, that goes like unexplained, but you just, you get it when you watch it, you know? Um, so, so what was it like casting all these ladies um, who are in a band? Like, did you look for people who were able to play any instrument or had any like musical ability? Was that uh number one or like a priority when when you're looking for uh who to cast for these parts so that was it really it was about having a, a musical ability so in the first um audition that we had um what we asked people to do it was to tape actually and we gave them a scene but we also gave them a piece of we gave them a song and we asked them if they would sing and dance and rock out to this song because what we wanted to see is, you know, how comfortable they were doing that. Um, that would tell us who could or couldn't sort of be in the band. And then throughout the process, they actually met with the musical director of the show to just see their musical ability. Not all of them um, could play before we started. Obviously, in a way, we were sort of, you know, given a weird gift by COVID because over that period, everyone could at home alone harness <laughs> that music. They, they ability. <laughs> exactly. But that's all that's all it was. It's just who can play and who do we think can learn to play. And there was actually one of the roles played, um, Bisma played by Faith, was recast um, due to a, a scheduling issue after we started filming again after COVID and for the people auditioning for that role, we had to send guitars to their houses to have that part of the audition <laughs> um, over Zoom with the musical director. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it's also like you, if, if they weren't able to play, it's like teaching them after their cast to, to be able to play believably. Right. So that's something that, that's it. Do. Like yeah. all Nida wanted was that it didn't great. Mm -hmm. As someone who can play an instrument, you're not watching them and thinking they're faking it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're not doing a great job. So it was really important, you know, always, always with this job. It just needed to feel authentic. It always came back to sort of that and that world, because this is the first time we were going to see this sort of idea of Muslim girls loving punk and being in this punk band in the UK. It felt so novel. It needed to feel right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you also hear about, you know, actors lying about like their, their skill. So <laughs> <laughs> what was there someone like you really wanted and like they lied about playing uh, an instrument or, or, you know, having any musical ability? If, if you lied, because the first step was you sort of taping and putting yourself out there, it was found out very quickly because <laughs> it is something that if you can't do well, yeah. it just doesn't come across comfortably. I think the main thing that was, it, it was less about that and more actually about forming of this band. So one of the parts of the process is that we all, it, it, there was actually quite a lot of people that we recalled to the final stage. And then we got them in in different iterations because it was all about who are these women? Who is this band? And they so there are some amazing the people. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. so there are some amazing people who unfortunately didn't get roles just because they didn't fit. It didn't make sense in this band, in this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think like the the alchemy for this group, is, it's it's great because I think they're so distinct and like you have like Anjana and like Sarah, especially as, as Sarah, I think she's such, such a striking character because she's someone who is just focused on Lady Part's success and she's kind of like emotionally unavailable too. And it just, it works in, in the group. Um, but one thing I also um, loved about it is like the, the comedic aspect too, because I think oftentimes um, when you see Muslim women like portrayed on screen, it's, it's uh, you know, maybe like they're portrayed as victims or like it's very serious, but like it's, uh, this is a comedy, like there's very, a lot of comedic elements to it. So was that something you guys kept in mind as well, uh, auditioning? Completely. Um, I think especially with Angela, a lot of it comes, I think, through her that voice character. Over her too, yeah. <laughs> There's a scene in it where she just walks <laughs> and I can't handle it. I find it to be the funniest walk I've ever seen. That physical comedy, you know, everything that she's doing. Um, because yeah, Sarah is so serious. So it's a different form of, of comedy, but completely, it was really important that that sort of shone through. So I'm not gonna lie, it, it was really hard. <laughs> it was a really hard job because with the comedy and the instruments and being true to, to these women and who they are, the pool's really small. Um, so at points it felt like, are we going to find this? But we kept on going and going and going and, you know, they were there and it's, it's amazing. And we're happy to have given them the opportunity. I mean, what, what does it mean for you to be able to give these actors, uh, many of whom I assume have been uh, working for a while, this opportunity to lead a, a hit show like this? I mean, from my regard, it feels such an amazing thing to have been able to do just because Obviously in, in my job, there's lots of times where you give people straight out of drama school or, or young people who you find these opportunities at the beginning of their career. But these are jobbing actors who I've met before. So to give them these distinct and defined roles and to just say, guys, they're here, please cast them. They're amazing, they're versatile. Um, it, 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 feels, it feels great. It feels great to have found that ensemble. And it feels great that they all get a chance to shine. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, and lastly, is there anything you can tell us about season two? Are, are you casting that as well? I can tell you that I'm excited about season two. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but in terms of the casting challenges it holds, I, I, I'm yet to, to find out any more. <laughs> Okay. Well, well, we'll just wait for it then. So, uh, well, Aisha, <laughs> it was great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time. And we'll see you back in a little bit. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.